Let's take a look at another covered interest arbitrage example. Quick reminder that covered interest arbitrage opportunity arises when interest rate parity does not hold. Interest rate parity is an international parity relationship that must hold to avoid arbitrage opportunities. And you have the equation um, here. And this, as you can see, provides a linkage between interest rates in two countries. We have a separate video that shows you how we derive interest rate parity. And we also have another covered interest arbitrage example video. So make sure to watch those if you're interested. So these numbers were the ones that we used um, in our previous example. So we are going to keep using these here as well. So you have spot rate between pound and dollar, that is dollar 25 per pound. You have US interest rate and you have UK interest rate. Um, so if you plug these numbers into the interest rate parity equation, so we put our US interest rate here, UK interest rate, and the spot rate of $1.25 here, we get forward rate of $1.20 per pound. What this means is that for interest rate parity to hold, forward rate needs to be $1.20 per pound. If forward rate happens to be Anything other than $1.20, we have covered interest arbitrage opportunity and we can make money. Um, in other words, we can make a risk less profit. We're going to follow the same set of steps that we used in our prior example. So in order to compute covered interest arbitrage um, problem, you first need to check if interest rate parity holds. Then if you see that interest rate parity does not hold, then you need to determine where you want to borrow and where you want to invest in order to make money. And easy way to remember this is that you want to borrow where it's cheaper or where it's lower and you want to invest where the proceeds will be higher. But remember that this is accounting for exchange rate or incorporating exchange rate hedging. So it's not just a, a simple comparison of interest rates. So just keep that in mind. Then once you know where to borrow and where to invest, uh, you can set up the exact uh, set of transactions and then determine your profit. Uh, a note here is that your sequence of transactions will be the same regardless of whether you are a domestic investor or a foreign investor. The only difference is going to be in which currency you want to realize your profit in. Um, so that's going to be the only difference. Um, and finally, uh, you need to be able to explain how interest rate parity will be restored as a result of the transactions you laid down here in step number three. So let's move on. Uh, in our previous example, we looked at what happens uh, when forward um, exchange rate happens to be greater than $1.20. So in this case, let's take a look at uh, a case when forward exchange rate happens to be lower than $1.20. So let's say forward exchange rate happens to be $1.15 per pound. And for simplicity, you can borrow $1,000 or the equivalent amount in pounds calculated at the spot exchange rate. So since the spot exchange rate is $1.25, that means you will be able to borrow either 800 pounds or $1,000. So first thing we do is we check whether interest, interest rate parity holds. So if you plug in all these numbers that are given to us uh, into interest rate parity, we see that the two sides do not equal. So that tells us that interest rate parity is not holding. Well, then we have covered interest arbitrage opportunity. Then, then how do we take advantage of this opportunity? Well, we want to borrow where it's lower, where the number is lower. So th this means we need to borrow in the UK and invest in the US. In other words, we want to borrow where the uh, fund, uh, the cost of borrowing is lower and invest where the proceeds will be higher after accounting for uh, exchange rate uh, uncertainty. Uh, in our case, we're using forward contract to hedge that uh, exchange rate uncertainty. So the bottom line is we want to borrow in the UK and invest in the US in order to make money. So now let's see the exact set of transactions. So as we said, we are going to borrow 800 pounds in the UK. And then we're going to take those 800 pounds and convert them into dollars at the spot market. Uh, and this is so that we can invest in the US. Um, so 800 pounds converted into dollars at the exchange rate of $1.25 will give us $1,000. Then we immediately invest those $1,000 in the US. 
and also at the same time we get into forward contract and we agree to buy pounds in one year time because we will need to repay our pound loan and the exact amount uh, on the contract is going to be 892 pounds because that's the amount we need to pay off our loan of 800 pounds at the uk interest rate of 11.56 percent so the net cash flow from all these transactions as you can see is zero um, so that's at time zero or that's at um, that's today at the outset now a year goes by so first thing you're going to do is you're going to collect the maturity value of, a, of your u.s investment so those thousand dollars that you invested in the u.s um, is now thousand seventy one dollars because u.s interest rate is seven point one percent then you're going to take your dollars and use them to buy pounds as you had already agreed to do um, but you do not need to convert all your thousand seventy one dollars because you just need to buy enough pounds to pay off your loan so in order to pay off the loan of um, eight, uh, loan payoff amount of 892.48 pounds you need 1026.35 dollars that is calculated at the agreed upon forward rate of dollar fifteen then you take those pounds that you just bought and deliver them to pay off your uh, pound loan and uh, net cash flow from this set from this set of transactions is forty four dollars and sixty five cents in other words you have just um, made profit of forty four dollars and sixty five cents so this is guaranteed profit because uh, we are considering only default free securities and on top of that you have no exchange rate risk here because you got into forward contract so now you have essentially risk less profit so profit with no risk no uncertainty next let's see whether um, it would be any different if you happen to be a british investor um, and that was based in pounds uh, as we said before the sequence of transactions is going to be exactly the same in order for you to make money whether you are british investor or american investor so the fact that you need to borrow in the uk and take those pounds uh, to the spot market sell them uh, and uh, receive dollars in return and invest those dollars in the us those steps are going to be exactly the same but the only difference is going to be uh, at the end uh, when you receive your proceeds from your us investment you are going to convert the entire amount which have which will be thousand seventy one dollars and you know that upfront because you're investing in uh, uh, de default free security so you know you are going to receive thousand seventy one dollars if you convert those uh, dollars into pounds at the agreed upon pound forward rate of one dollar fifteen uh, this is the amount of pounds so the contract amount as you can see is different from the previous step so you will agree to buy pounds in one year's time at the price of dollar 15 and then this is the amount of pounds you will be buying at that time again your net cash flow at time zero or at the beginning of this um, contract or um, at the beginning of the seat of this arbitrage transactions is zero uh, then a year goes by and you will be collecting your us investment maturity value and that will be 1071 um, because us interest rate is 7.1 percent then you will be selling those dollars and buying pounds as you had agreed to do and the forward rate was dollar 15 um, and that will raise you or that will um, uh, generate 931 pounds for you of course you have to pay off your loan um, and then the payoff amount is 892 pounds um, at the UK interest rate and as a result you have profit of 38.82 pounds so as you can see again um, the sequence of transactions are the same the only difference is um, how many pounds you agree to buy forward um, and that depends on whether you are a pound based trader or US based trader um, and as a pound based trader you make 38.82 pounds of profit again this is guaranteed profit next um, let's see what happens to interest rate parity um, as more and more people undertake these transactions if you recall initially interest rate parity was not holding and that's why you went out uh, and undertook these transactions so if everyone starts borrowing in the UK there will be much more demand for funds in the UK which will raise interest rates up in 
uh, in the UK. Then everyone will be taking those borrowed uh, pounds and selling them um, in the spot market, which will lower spot exchange rate um, for pounds. Then with everyone investing in the US and bringing funds with them, uh, US interest rate will go down. And also, finally, with everyone agreeing to buy pounds at the, fo at the forward market, forward rate for pounds will go up. So what's the net effect? Well, if you recall, initially, this left-hand side, which represented the investment um, uh, outcome from U US, was higher than this right-hand side, which was the investment outcome from UK. Um, but now, um, the left-hand side will go down as a result of these transactions, and the net effect from all of these is that right-hand side will go up. And um, they'll continue doing so until the both sides equal and there will no longer be a covered interest arbitrage opportunity because now interest rate parity holds. Um, so as you can see, these very transactions that we undertake to take advantage of the fact that interest rate parity was not holding, this actually leads to the restoration of interest rate parity.